This is the underconfident human coming at you. Thank you, as always, for hanging out with me. I really appreciate you watching and how that makes me feel. It's, it's, it's really great, so thank you. Anyways, if you're just tuning in, this is part two of a video I started um, creating a so-called battle bag. Um, this is the quick version of the story I covered in the first one is I have this rucksack that I travel with and uh, which travel is a bit of an exaggeration but anyway whenever I have to pack clothes in this thing um, I you know fill this up and it's uh, it is what it is but I had sewn this KMFDM patch on back when I got the bag and pretty much left it like that and somewhat recent times, you know, I was I followed a couple of battle jacket and battle vest groups on Instagram, and someone coined the term battle bag, which I have never heard of prior, and it sounds silly to me. But anyways, um, some people were covering book bags and even a fanny pack once with patches. And since I had done this and left that on there, and I kept looking at this and got the idea, I was like, well, hell. I'll join along with the fun, I guess, and uh, kind of sew some of my unused patches and my big stash of patches uh, onto this. Kind of cover my bag here, just for fun, uh, because this is generally a relaxing and fun process for me. So, anyway, that's the story if you're just tuning in, and if you already heard all that once, well, sorry. But uh, we'll just continue where we left off here. Before we do, though, let's take a moment to enjoy some, uh, just a moment of some rucksack sounds. demonstrated how to set up the sewing of a patch uh, the tools I use to do it like how I do it and so I really recommend going back and the link will be in the description and maybe watching that one if you want to know a little more of a slower explanation and show and tell of how I actually sew my patches on the things what type of thread I use and all that so.
figure out my patch layout, which I still haven't yet. I'm just winging it as I go here, but I just thought that maybe these two should be side by side. It just makes sense to me. thread. Use my fingers, I'll kind of trim down some of that edge. so that I can be near this edge when I complete this. Ooh, mega thick, mega, mega thick. Mm. I know I could spin this the other way and bring it a little closer to me, but I am predominantly right-handed, so and this isn't terribly far out of my reach or anything, so I'll just work a little further away. so genuinely thick and well done. This thing's just so shimmery and glossy in the light. Peter Steele green. <laughs>
guys tell me what you want to talk about. Hmm. Generally, things have been pretty calm on my end, just work and sleep. Because, you know, my particular life doesn't really serve any other purpose. I guess one thing that'd be fun to talk about, I did uh, recently get to go see KMFDM again. I've seen them, you know, a handful of times throughout my years, and it was really, really an incredible show. I guess I would say that anytime since they're my most favorite band, but here's the thing. This was the first time that I have ever been up front, and I mean right up front of the stage. Like there was only one row of people ahead of me standing at the, you know, the guards that keep you from being able to approach the actual stage, but like I've never been that close to KMFDM before. I really desperately wanted Sasha somehow, some way to get a hold of him to sign my back patch on my vest. And I wish I could tell him like a zillion other people have told him that I've been a fan of him for more than 20 years. And, uh, you know, what a hardcore collector I am and so on and so forth. Not that he would really give a shit, but despite being that close, I was trying, but never really got a, got away. He either ignored me or maybe just you know, couldn't, I don't know. But anyway, there was a band that opened up for him, kind of an industrial, very different performance art for sure, but an industrial band called Chant that was, that was pretty cool. obviously have some fans because there were a couple of people floating around that had uh, had their shirts and whatnot on. I had never heard of them, but I liked their performance. I think they did a pretty awesome job. If you are interested, uh, I got all, I got tons and tons of pictures, of course, and video. Um, but if you find underconfident human on Instagram, you can follow me there. And I did post up, I picked out some of the better pictures. Some of them are really good, I have to say, uh, from my photo library there and posted them. I tried to post some clips of video too, but the damn Instagram app would just freeze when I would try to upload the video and it wouldn't go through. So can't post any video. I was really close to throwing some on this channel because so I got some really really good footage being that close and obviously it's in high def but uh, I occasionally like to just break the mold and slap something that's not ASMR up on this channel just because it's me being me but um, I'm not gonna post concert footage on here. is that, you know, if I ever got any kind of following or whatever by any chance, and I don't really know what the likelihood is, but I don't want my channel to be a place where people can come hang out with a fellow nerd and a fellow incel of sorts and kind of nerd out or just relax. Kind of that, you know, mental safe space that you don't talk to other people about, you know, just kind of a place where you know you will be able to come hang out with me and just sort of enjoy a quiet, a quiet and unimportant video. Just something to relax to, you know? But anyways, yeah, it was a hell of a show. Probably the best one I've ever been to. Only because, as I said, they performed a good handful of the classics and um, at least half the show was, you know, touring for the new album, Hyena, which is fine. But it was really awesome.
awesome to be that close. And given, you know, my particular dead-end job type of thing and the problems I have right now and my income and all that, being able to afford a ticket and go see them is just really special. And extra, extra monumental. I just, damn, I wish I could have had a way of getting Sasha to sign my back patch. All these years, that's the one thing I think I could have ever asked for that just isn't likely to happen. And there we go. Now, I tie the knot here. Well, a few knots. So, let's see who's next, huh? You know, I just can't, can't get over how I like that look. I think Zymox will go here. Ministry may breaks up the monotony of the emotional stuff because Zymox is pretty emotional too for me. <laughs> but
someone more skilled, a little more crafty, would probably know how to do this without burning so much thread. Because as you notice, every time I cut off at the end, I do have a fair amount of extra thread left over. But you know, I am a believer of too much is always better than not enough. I like to have the amount of length available to work with comfortably, extra comfortably. And it only costs a couple of bucks for some thread anyway. So I figure if I want to do it, I'll do it right the first time. Just that easy. kind of using my hand behind to keep this flattened out. And I'll start a little bit down here so that I end up up here as close to the edge of the lip as possible. feels a little bad, I guess, maybe for putting in this labor right now with no music playing in the background because you so band patches on, you should at least listen to a song by the band while you're doing it, maybe. Hmm. I didn't do every patch on my vest with music playing. Most of them I did, though. The earbuds. I guess... And this one is uh, called When We Were Young. That is a particularly dark uh, industrial tune from Clan of Zymox. Because if you ever listen to them, they have different variations in their sound depending on the album they're doing. But anyway, um, When We Were Young is a... Uh, Got that industrial grit that we all know and love. It's dark, slightly, slightly down tempo. And plenty of that melancholy touch that Ronnie Moorings brings to the table when he makes music. see my hands behind here obviously but I've got my fingers spread apart a bit and I'm using it to create a flat surface so that I can sew the patch on correctly without again creating wrinkles and crevices and um, just in general being able to keep it uh, 
level enough for me to push the next stitch through one at a time. stitch just a little bit from one of these two strings so I kind of worked it out to we're back to even again on this circle of thread here. I think I mentioned it before but that is something that you will probably do a lot if you're sewing patches. It's very crucial to keep that even. That's that circle of thread that runs through your needle there. Very important to keep that even. Because the moment it's not, you'll have a ton of problems and probably end up ruining your stitch because you know, create a, a knot that you can't get out in the wrong place or you pull a knot through the hole where your needle went through and then you're really screwed. I guess I didn't pay close enough attention to stationing this looks from where I'm sitting like it might be the whole patch might be slightly counterclockwise to where I would want it if I was going to have it perfectly straight but admittedly for me that's not entirely what the game is about I'm not that intense of a perfectionist you know is just enough that I want them to be reasonably sewn on right and I don't mean the fact this is facing slightly off kilter but more uh, that it's secured and not going to rip off and that I don't create like crevices and wrinkles that I sew through and are then become permanent as a result. It's not meant to be a name brand fashion show. A little imperfection in stitching or shape or just whatever is okay. Perhaps even encouraged. showed you in the last video sometimes you just gotta pull back a little bit and slowly and sort out the two strings of thread until you can get a nice smooth loop again. Never pull hard or fast because then you'll be stuck. You'll create a knot and ruin it. Here 
was a little tricky because I came very close to the edge of where the pocket is sewn to the backpack, so I have to kind of push my needle through at a bit of an angle. That's all my fault. I wasn't paying very good attention to when I was taping this down. I should have came over this way just a little bit and rotated a little bit if, of course, I wanted it or needed it to be absolutely perfectly straight and centered. And this time I did neither. That, my friends, is not a total failure, though. That is a mistake that adds character. In my humble opinion. I intended for it to be nice and centered and perfect when I pictured it in my head, but that's all good. random thinking here I believe I know the two communities I follow on Instagram for battle jackets and whatnot is uh, one of them's called battle vest war gallery and I'm pretty sure the other one is just called patches and vests I think they're both run by foreign guys but uh, they are really dedicated to keeping their page full and people submit battle jackets and whatnot to them all the time and they constantly keep like keep it up to date so they are really dedicated to the cause you know so I'd recommend if you're an Instagram person hop on there and find those two communities battle vest war gallery and patches and vests and look at all the different wildly different battle jackets and stuff that people make some of them are so impressive. They make my real, I thought my battle jacket, my vest was really awesome. And I am immensely proud of it. But after seeing some of them that some of these people make and post on there, you can definitely tell the difference between guys like me who are just trying to do a good job versus some of them guys who are freaking artists. It's, it's insane. Easier, easier to show if I packed it full of toiletries and whatnot I use, but there we go so far. And it's with this and this, that's why I use my hand underneath because there is a certain amount of space here so the pocket can expand right and when you flatten it out you get the wrinkles around the edges where it meets but as you can see when I push there there is no 
I didn't sew through any of this fabric to create wrinkles. So that's, that allows that maximum expansion when I pack it full of stuff. Now, seems like the perfect place for that. I can't say I'm super crazy about this blue jean denim thing inside this patch, but just... Yeah. Because I could put a band up there, but I don't know. I think I really want this one up here. That's what I'm going to do. Sew one up here, and then that'll be it for today's video, I think. I don't want to make these too stupidly long at a time. Because of the color scheme of this patch, I'm just going to use all black, but I think I will go ahead and use some red for this since it's. I don't actually know why when they made this patch they chose red, because, I mean, blue is generally the. like that teal esque blue is kind of one of the state colors to me like when I think of well, I don't know when I think of Charlotte NC I think of course my Hornets and my Panthers and blue but hey typical fashion, more thread than I will remotely need, but I'm going to create that big circle.
did you really expect me to have a video where I have something that has a, a, a lid or a cap and not make the bottle cap sounds or the lid sounds? You know how fond I am of those. Once again, fan my arms all the way outside to my side here to stretch this out. Try to get these edges reasonably even and make some knots. And yes, and once again, just like before, you know this is a different color. You saw all those different spools I had in that jar. 100% nylon upholstery thread because it's super heavy duty. And that's just how I like my patches sewn anyway. All right. Okay. The, the medical tape. Man, this patch is thick. The patch felt kind of heavy, like, initially, but man, trying to pierce through it, it really is, uh, really is pretty heavy duty. Yeah, I just, I gotta admit, I don't, this is, I guess... Yes, a, a somewhat unique patch because the color scheme doesn't quite fit. But I mean, to me anyway. But I love my, I love my city. I'm very proud of Charlotte. Other than being somewhere on the list of biggest, uh, somewhere on the list anyway, being biggest. One of the biggest cities in the country. It's so gorgeous to just stand back and look at. Even though, like any big city, there are plenty of uh, places you kind of want to stay away from. Let's see, now I'm stuck here. I can't pull this through. It's too stiff. So that's where one of these boys comes in handy. Gonna use it to. Force it the rest of the way through. Doesn't look like it to me, but I might have got into the edge of edge embroidery a little bit, which is why it was so hard to push through.
so close to the edge of the patch and the color of the thread it's actually blending in pretty good I think on the end of the flaps here. I don't actually know how loud it's going to be in the headphones, and if it is, I don't blame you if you skip this video entirely based on that. But if it's not as loud as I think it might be, then that's a plus. I promise I'm not trying to torture you on purpose. the only other patch of mine that I no there's two that I use this red thread on off the top one of them is one of my misfits patches on my vest the other is the uh, what the guy called the Dobie Devil which is not it's the Beastie logo for the free BSD operating system that little red devil little red demon I sewed him with red thread too Sure. Oh, nope. Nope, 
it's not the last. overlapping the previous one a bit, but there we go. Oh, I didn't feel this, look. See how there's this slack in there? It's because one of these threads, I didn't pull it tight or I didn't feel it loose when I was pulling. So it caught somewhere in here, probably right there. And so I pulled and it felt tight, but one of them wasn't. But while that kind of sucks, it's far enough back from where I started that there's no way between the tension of that and the tension of that one that pulled across it, it, can, it can't go anywhere. Also, it's underneath this stitch, so there is nothing other than that being slightly unsightly. There is nothing that can be caused as a result of that. I got kind of lucky with that little mistake. So, we are perfecto. And once again, here's me. Look, look. Such a wasteful guy. So, this is where I'm going to end this now. Um, I don't know that I intend on making a third video and doing more of these or not. I think I'm just going to sew more patches onto this when I have more free time. Just do one or two patches and then quit for a while and hop in some other time. I still have a lot of studs left. I might throw some studs on here too, but I don't know if I want to do that or not really. Um, I'll think about it, but anyway... hope you found the sounds relaxing uh, as always I can't say it enough really thank you so much for hanging out with me um, the electronic algorithm likes it I think if I say to you if you like what you see please like and subscribe for more content subscribe for more content and hit the bell for notifications for more of my ASMR goodness L O L. <laughs> Anyways, guys, uh, so back to reality. Thanks. 
and have a good night. This is the Underconfident Human signing out. See ya.